So, what's going on, dreamers, and welcome to, uh, this is the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, by the way, if you don't, because you can't really see from right here, because it's Italian. So, for starters, uh, don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe, so we can reach 25 subscribers. I'm putting it up on the board, 25 subscribers. I know we have 20 already, so, yeah, 25 subscribers, just so you guys know. So, this is just a random time. Um, it's not like something I... Great, okay. Boop. Ah, 11.15, your favorite time of day. Right, if you do this multiple times, it'll like, uh, remember each time you did it and it'll give you a prize or something like that. Or could you simply not resist giving me the correct time again? <laughs> After all, I know how much you enjoy setting the time correctly. Okay, now I'm curious how accurate 11.15 p.m. is. Let's use another slider to find out. How about... Uh, sure. You know, can I just say, regardless of the accuracy of the clock i'm having a great time adjusting these settings i feel like i'm learning about more about you and how you like things to be set well it's off now it's good to collect data i wish we had more s sliders but We've gone through all the sliders I have. Hmm. Perhaps I just... Perhaps I can invent some new sliders to gather new data on you. Shouldn't be too hard, yeah? Shouldn't be too hard, yeah? Let me whip up a couple of new ones for you. Should be ready by the next time you boot the game. Okay. And we're probably going to do that. So the Stanley Portable Ultra Deluxe. This game, I have been through it a bunch of times, even though it says the Stanley Portable 2. So what I'm going to do is, even though this is way beyond where I want to be, I tried restarting the game. It doesn't let me. So... This is the story of a man named Stanley. Okay. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Oh, cool. So I got the achievement, quit the game, and restarted. I definitely did that. That's, that's an achievement. So there are basically, I don't know how many endings to this. There's like so many. Some aren't even like real endings. They're just like go into like to the to the back to the beginning. So, yeah. Um, I played this game a little bit. Uh, 
just to see how it was, and, uh, I mean, I have played it before, but, yeah, anyways, uh, you can play with the controller, that is something you can do, I, I believe you can, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe you can play with the controller on this, uh, but. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed... Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm... I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, yeah. a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. Now, back to door number 437. Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine? All right. Back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. Oh, um, there's the desk. Oh. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'm going to comply to this one. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Yep. Okay. So you can, in the original version of this game, you can't really go inside here, but uh, at a certain point you can. So yeah, there's that. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, 
Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him, and so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Okay, so I would go down the escape, but I'll probably do that another time, but I just want to stick to staying compliant. Right now. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? I sure do. <laughs> okay. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant yeah, nothing. I see it. <laughs> uh, yep. There I am. I feel like one of them was still on. The, uh... Oh, that one's broken. Oh my god. Okay. Got some fires. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control, never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all.
for right now, just like the start of it. I just want to be compliant. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had oh defeated God. the machine, unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. <laughs> hey, complete the Stanley Parable game. Yep, I did. I, I got the achievement before, but I'm gonna... Glad I got that. So that was the first uh, good ending. Well, the, the compliant ending, I guess you can say. So... Oh, yeah, this is Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf. Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Yeah, not gonna happen this time. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go. Turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going. What all this means, I barely know where to start. What's that? Oh, okay. You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine, I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. 
I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock, why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. Okay. I don't know if there's a way to do that. Or do the uh, on-off switch. The moment he entered his manager's office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Not a living soul anywhere. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Okay. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Right. So if you do it fast, he has a reaction. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. All right, I already went done, done two of those, and I don't know if there's a way to like complete the uh, sequence. I'm not even gonna try. Uh, let's get out of here. Although this passageway had the word Escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> the door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Yeah, I bet I did. <laughs> At this point, Stanley was making though. a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Right. Okay. I don't know if there's a way to, like, just go back and stuff, but... At least... Maybe we'll try that again uh, in the next round. All right, it's go time. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. 
Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? <laughs> yeah. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Oh. Wow. So this is like a memoir of the first game. Office layout. So this is what the office layout looked like, huh? Interesting uh, way for the office there. Oh, this is where the two doors was. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, computer. Desk. Uh, filing cabinets. Some had like two windows on it. So, well, then the big ones had one file on it. Then, okay. Office computers. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, somebody was playing. Uh, Solitaire. Interesting. Play database, I don't care. Alright. Uh, so this is what the doors look like. Okay. These are the office doors. <laughs> There's a coffee mug on it. On the floor. Alright. This one had boxes on it. This one had a filing cabinet next to it. And these are the buttons. Button sounds. Okay. And this is all the uh, the the credits. Yep. Uh, let's go down this path. Credits. This is what the office clock looked like? Oh my god, okay. Alright, uh, and this one is the boss's office. Early design, it looked like. The current design, or something, I think. And then the basic design, wow. <laughs> Just nothing hardly in it. Okay. I think that's the, like, the pre-alpha version. And then that's the beta version. And this is, like, the, uh, <laughs> the current version. At least they got through it more and more each time. That's good. <laughs> it's just basic and shit. Uh, what's down here? Couches. The lounge. Oh, cool. Alright. And then what is this? Underground. Okay. So it didn't have a sign just hanging there. It had an actual, like, uh, escape on top of the freaking door. Stanley stood on the roof.
combine braiding. Nothing there. Shoot. Well, try the other one then. Braiding the voice for the dialogue for the entire game. Stanley pushed the number six. And finally, he pushed the number six. Hmm. Let's see. Stanley walked through the. Stanley stood on the roof. Freedom ending. Ah, oh, neat. Hey, can I see the building? All right. What is this? Uh, the countdown desk. Freedom ending. Okay. What else do we have here? Zending. Sending model, okay. The sending levers, oh. <laughs> okay. The game is now paused, oh, okay. Escape menu. Yep. Let's go down this path. Ooh, what's in here? This is the, the cargo lift. Oh, yeah. Cargo lift, another cargo lift area. Interesting. What is this? The apartment timer. <laughs> Another picture of the lounge, okay. Narrator emails, oh. This is the uh, Ultra Deluxe Achievements, okay. <laughs> Money Splash, okay. <laughs> Alien Base, oh, okay. War Zone, okay. The cyber Area, okay. Yeah, whatever. Oh god, okay. Right. Uh maintenance room. Wow, it's so boring. Alright. <laughs> Another office. Oh yeah, yeah, I've been through here. Did I not go in here? I don't think so. <laughs> oh look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. Yeah, that's true. 
But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let... Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. So, last time I just went in, I think this time I'm going to turn back and see what happens exactly. Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Usually I would go in there, but I really don't want to do that whole uh, sequence thing again because it was confusing as hell. I want to go down the elevator again. And then after this, we'll call it a day. Whoops. Nope. Uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow! <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? Who knows? It's such a mystery. Did you think we were going to go forward down the spooky corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. <laughs> the suspense is killing me. Oh my god, it's the boss's office. <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this.
Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait! No! I need more time to process. I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview, of course. Going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. Let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense, the agony of waiting and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? There we go. Isn't this so much more exciting? You know, Stanley, it seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want yep. big, explosive moments flung right That's in their true. faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? Oh, to have to think and to anticipate and then to marvel at the eventual reveal. This is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. And it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time, and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. That's why people like you so much, Stanley, because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a role model, you know? People look up to you. Which is why, though I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you, so that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Oh, good, we're here. Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. Okay, the storyteller Stanley reveals all his new book. Okay. All right, are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry. You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay, it looks like they're ready for you. Go get them.
<laughs> All right, I think that's enough for today. Uh, I might uh, come back to this another time. Uh, this is just to fill the uh, the slot for uh, the Star Wars Wi-Fi show that uh, didn't happen today. So yeah, don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe so we can reach 25 subscribers. Got it? Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So we'll try and see if we can get other endings of another uh, episode. Uh, it'll probably be in a later time. It's not going to be like early more. It will be uh, at this time, but we'll see how it goes. So anyways, bye!